the Modern Warfare 2 campaign is going to be crazy and I have some speculations that I want to go over. So let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. And before we start, happy Modern Warfare 2 launch week. I am super excited to make a lot more content on this game. There's so much to do, there's so much to talk about, there's so much to show. And I will be live streaming this campaign even if nobody watches, but I will be doing it on the 20th at about 4 Pacific time. I will confirm in the next video, but I am planning to do it at that specific time, right? It will be late, but in case you miss anybody else's stream, then you can come to mine and we can join, enjoy the campaign from the start. I'll try to finish it in one sitting, but if I can't, then I'll stream the rest on the next day at the same hour, okay? Oh, and also, it'll be for the most part no commentary, except on the parts where I really need to react for whatever reason, but yeah, mostly no commentary. Now let's start! One of the most important aspects, or characters rather, is General Shepard. We know he's in the story, we don't know what role he's going to play, but we expect him to have a pretty big appearance in this game. Shepard is kind of a huge character to reintroduce, of course, and he wouldn't be Shepard if he wasn't a traitorous bastard. So, I expect him to be the same, but either under different circumstances or for different reasons. See, the thing is that he was a traitor in the original campaign because he lost thousands of marines on that nuclear explosion that happened in COD 4, and the world didn't really do anything about it. He wanted a war against Russia because of that. He didn't get it. So, to have his personal revenge, he pulled strings in Modern Warfare 2 to create a war against Russia. He used Private Allen to sneak up on Makarov and do that terrorist attack on Zakaev International Airport. And that was pretty much just so that Makarov could betray Allen realizing that he was American, live, leaving on the airport and blame the entire Russian attack on America, so that that could create a war. And then he betrayed one for one, because they were pretty much about to find out that he had done all of this, so he needed basically to tie all loose ends and get rid of anyone who had all of that information, so that's why he killed Rhodes, Ghost, and was about to kill Soap and Price. Price was on his tail the whole campaign as soon as he was released from the Gulag. So yeah, he ultimately failed in that, but one for one still became disavowed and pretty much outlaws after that. Now, I don't expect things to go the same way in the new version of this Call of Duty universe, and I also don't expect Shepard to be the traitorous bastard in this specific game, because to fuel his desire for revenge, I think we do need a catastrophic event to occur. That nuclear explosion was catastrophic enough to kill thousands of soldiers. I don't know what's gonna happen in Modern Warfare 2, but maybe they will be setting up some sort of catastrophe that will kill, once again, thousands of soldiers to fuel Shepard's desire for for revenge once again. But I think that'll be set up in this game as was set up in COD 4, only to then build Shepard's character on, on top of that in the next game. Now, there is potential that with this rumored DLC campaign that they might use this plotline there instead of the sequel, as we wouldn't have to wait till Modern Warfare 3 to see Shepard as the enemy once again. Rather, I would like it if he was set up as an enemy either defeated or not defeated in the DLC campaign so that for Modern Warfare 3 we already have things set up to jump immediately into the story of that game, right? No no introductions, no slow build-up. The game starts and is breakneck speak all the way to the end. Something like that is what I would like to see. And my personal prediction, once again, is that Shepard will not betray us in this campaign, at least not in the same way. However, there is one theory that throws a wrench into what I'm thinking right now, and it's Shadow Company. Shepard did have a Shadow Company in Modern Warfare 2 Original. In this story, I actually had the idea that Shadow Company was a PNC, a private military company. So basically, Price as Task Force 1 for 1 would hire Shadow Company to help them out against Alcatala or AQ because they're operating again. But when you watch the mission Dark Water, we have footage of this mission, right? And Shadow Company has the direct communication with Shepard, which makes me think that Shepard actually did have enough funding in the story th for whatever reason, to have his personal shadow company. Even though he's a general, I'm not sure if they would be allowed to have a private company of their own, or maybe shadow company is not a private company. I don't know. I really don't understand. They were also part of the Allegiance side of things, which was the more eastern part of the world side in Modern Warfare 2019. So I still can't make some coherent connections there, but there is a possibility, however, that Shadow Company will betray us at some point. We've seen in one of the trailers one of the good guys killing a Shadow Company member. Maybe it wasn't one of the good guys. We don't know exactly, but I'm not expecting Shadow Company to stay as the good guys throughout the whole thing, right? In fact, they may even go as far as to say that if they are a PMC, maybe, 
then perhaps AQ hired them from the start of the story to work with Task Force 141 up to a certain point in the story, up to the turning point, the part where the twist is going to happen. And then is when Shadow Company now has the order to betray TF-141. And maybe that's when a catastrophic event happens. I'm not sure. But I would be wary of Shadow Company. But that leaves one other thing out there. And that's who's the main bad guy of this story? Now, the trailers have shown us this guy, Hassan, I think is his name. We've seen him uh, in the reveal trailer, where we're trying to track him down in Iran, apparently. And in the launch trailer, we apparently capture Hassan and we are about to interrogate him with Shadow Company. Now, whether this guy is the main bad guy or not, I really don't think he will be. I think he will play more of a role like the Wolf from 2019. He was the leader of Alcatel at the time. He seemed like he was going to meet the main bad guy, but he wasn't. We dealt with him before the climax, and ultimately the bad guy of that campaign was General Barkov of the Russian army. And he was not teased in any of the trailers for Modern Warfare 2019, which makes me think that the trailers that we've seen now are not telling us who the main bad guy is. On purpose, obviously. They don't want to spoil the possibly big surprise. And that big surprise, I think, will be Al-Assad instead. I think Al-Assad will be the main final bad guy, the real villain of this story. Maybe he won't cause another nuclear explosion or that catastrophic event once again. He did that in the first game, even though it was really macro, but in COD 4 you would have thought that it was actually Al-Assad. But anyway, I think it will be part of the story and it would be a good way to bring Farah back into the story because we are expecting at this point that Al-Assad is actually Hadir, Farah's brother, in disguise, obviously. In one of the cutscenes, he even has a similar voice. I'm not sure if the operator right now has the same voice as Hadir's. I don't think so. That would kind of give it away. And so the other weird thing is that he didn't have a Shadow Company patch in his uniform in Vanguard and Warzone. Now, I'm not sure if that really means anything or not right now. It could be a mistake. It's just an operator skin, so who knows? But if Al-Assad is actually Farah's brother, then that's a way to reintroduce Farah into the story, as I was expecting that the Russian invasion in Urzikstan has slowed down tremendously, if not completely halted, and there may not be as many Russian troops in that country right now. So Farah's liberation force doesn't really have that much point, and she may be focused on rebuilding Urzikstan now more than anything. But I, I think it's logical that she would also be keeping tabs on her brother. Of course, Hadir was sent to prison, but al Qatala really was fond of Hadir, so they obviously got him out of prison. And it's likely that Farah knows of this, as he has been trying to track down Hadir where he went. With this come to find out, oh, he's Al-Assad, now I'm tracking Al-Assad. And because al and because al Assad and AQ are operating once again, are trying to incite a war of their own apparently, then it would make sense for Farah to join TF-141 once again, Hopefully along with Alex. We don't know anything of Alex in this story. And that could be a nice setup, but also Farah has not been seen in any of the trailers. So if this does happen, it might happen halfway through the campaign. I don't think we've seen any sort of late game footage in any of these trailers. I hope we haven't. But yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Oh, and before anyone says that, oh, the destruction of Berdansk would set off Shepard in this story to be the traitor. So that already happened. I don't think so. Because it was more personal to Shepard in COD 4. He lost his Marines in that event. The destruction of Berdansk was really just a bunch of operators, possibly with no personal connection to Shepard in any way, shape, or form. Maybe w he knew one or two operators there that turned into zombies and died in the with the nuclear explosion, but not in the same level, and I don't think he would try to create a war because of that. That was ultimately an event that needed to happen, otherwise zombies were going to be all over the world or something like that. But I do actually hope that they reference the destruction of Verdansk at least in one line. I just need them to acknowledge this event happening with one simple line, and that's it. Because I would immediately acknowledge the existence of zombies in this story. Which would be crazy, and I'm not sure if Modern Warfare is ready to do something like that. Black Ops would be, absolutely, but not Modern Warfare. But if they acknowledge it, then yeah, it's... Maybe it's something that they just keep under wraps as much as possible because, oh no, zombies exist in the real world. That is it for now. If anything else comes up, I'll talk about it perhaps, but these are my predictions for the story. And it's only a couple of days till we actually see what's going on and we'll see how many predictions I got right. There's not that many. There's basically three main predictions here. Separate bad guy or not in this game, al being the main bad guy and Farah coming back. Oh, and also Shadow Company. Are they the traitors or not? That's it. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.